One of the biggest misconceptions I come across teaching computer science is the definition of a kilobyte. There seem to be two accepted definitions of a kilobyte. If you are to ask someone what a kilobyte is and they don't really know much about computers, they're likely to look at the word kilo and surmise that that probably means a thousand and therefore it must mean one thousand bytes. If they know a little bit about computers, they might try and be a bit smarter and say, well, actually, the exact number is 1024, and therefore this is a kilobyte and this isn't. The technical answer, and the one that's really only true, is that this one is a kilobyte, and this one isn't. The reason we use this is that this is the exact number of bytes that we'd use to represent um, an amount of data around about a thousand. And the reason is that we use um, base two number system, okay? And we use powers of two to get our bytes. So for example, if we have two to the power of 10, that is what we mean when we say, or what we used to mean when we used to say a kilobyte, two to the power of 10. Two to the power of 10 is 1024. A megabyte is 2 to the power of 20, and that is 1048576 bytes, and it keeps going up like that. 2 to the power of 30 is a gigabyte. So these are the actual measurements of the bytes, because when we are talking about kilobytes and megabytes, it must fit in a power of 2. However, it doesn't work exactly like that with these definitions. And the reason is that before the late 90s, it used to be an accepted thing that a kilobyte was 1024 bytes because that's the actual number of the memory size that we use. However, in 1998, someone pointed out that, well, a kilowatt and a kilogram and a kilometer are all 1000 because this here comes from the Greek for 1000. And therefore, kilobyte doesn't fit into that. So, they decided to come up with a completely different name for 1024, because it was decided that under the international system of units, kilogram couldn't fit into there. So what they came up with was a kibibyte. And they decided that this one, we would keep it at 1000, because it's kilo. But if you wanted to talk in technical terms, you would have to use the term kibibyte, which meant 1024. They did exactly the same with a megabyte. Here, we said that this one could represent exactly one million. However, if you wanted to talk in technical terms of the exact amount of data, then you couldn't use megabyte, right? We'd have to use mebibyte. It was a shortening of million and bits, like kilo was a shortening of uh, kilo and bits. Uh, kilo and, and binary, sorry, mebi and kibi. Okay, so maybe byte is one oh four eight five seven six, and if we extend that even further, then we get a yobby byte, which is the exact amount of bytes that we would use if we were building a system of memory for that. Okay, whereas a yotta byte, which is the term that you probably know, is all of the zeros. Unfortunately, this didn't exactly catch on exa as they expected it to. Generally, people still use the term kilobyte interchangeably to talk about 1000 or 1024. They still use the term uh, megabyte to talk about 1 million or this number here, 1048576. So, it's a little bit of a misconception when people use the term megabyte to mean the actual number or kilobyte to mean 1024 because, technically speaking, in the international system of units, this is correct and this isn't but unfortunately because this never really caught on it's sort of a bit of a pub fact rather than anything that is technically used and you could even find people that work in computer science or teach computer science that never use the term kibibyte okay but if you want to prove someone wrong in the future then a kilobyte is 1000 and a kibibyte is 1024 and we also have mebibytes, kibibytes, uh, tebibytes, yobibytes etc. In an exam they sometimes ask you 
uh, they might come up with a scenario like uh, Peter has a CD and he's figured out that it holds uh, 1,050 songs. Um, John has the same CD, he's figured out it holds 1,070 songs. Why have they come up with a different answer? And the reason is that one of them is using the rounded number correctly and the other one is incorrectly using the exact data number and that's the reason they've come up with two different answers.